Welcome guys to another Pure Knowledge video and in this video we'll try to let you understand the difference between mitosis and meiosis and just before we continue just to make note that notes for this video was taken from the Concise Vision course Biology CSEC by Antin Dale. Very good book. Recommend you get one. So let's go. So mitosis basically is the replication of cells that of body cells right they are not mitosis is not involved in reproduction sexual reproduction so that's the major difference between mitosis and meiosis right mitosis is replication of body cells and when body cells replicate they replicate identically Right, so the same 46 chromosome that's in that particular body cell, which is the diploid number, that 46 chromosome is replicated right down to the T. Right, so it's identical. Right, it has to do with body cells and not sexual reproduction. Right, so basically, these are the phases you need to know for CXC are the events you need to know for CXC. Um, CXC just requires you to know the events, not really the phases. But if you know the phases already, then it's beautiful, right? So this video is really about the events and not the phases down to the T. So first, we have a cell here that is not replicating. So when the cell is not dividing, the chromosomes are not visible. They exist as long, thin strands called chromatid threads. And we can see here, they are long and thin. We see the nuclear membrane clear, we see the central clear, and we see the chromatid threads composed of DNA. And we see that right here, as, as stated before. Then next, the chromosomes shorten, thicken, and duplicate themselves, become visible. Right, and we see now where they are no longer long, now they are short, thicker, and now they become visible. So these are now called chromosomes now and not chromatids. So very important to note that chrome it's only called chromosomes during replication. Right? When a cell is not replicating, it's considered to be chromatid. So just to note, right? So each consists of two identical chromatids joining at the central mirror, and the central mirror will be this here. The central separating from a spindle fire between them. So we see where the central will have been separated. We see one going to the north, one going to the south. And we see the spindle fiber forming in between. Then now we see where the nuclear membrane disintegrates. So if we go back, we will see where the nuclear membrane would have been here. But the next event is that it disappears, right? And then now, uh, disintegrates mean, you know, degenerate, dis disappear. You can use disappear for simpler terms. And the spindle fiber forms between the central. So we see where the spindle fiber are you now forming between the centrals. This is central, this is the central here. Right? And the chromatid thread, the chromatid pairs line up around the equator of the spindle. So equator in this case just mean middle, right? Equator mean middle, right? We see the centromere attached to the equator of the spindle fiber, as we stated before. And now we say, of course, these are the spindle fiber. The next stage now, my next event, is the chroma, the centromere split and the spindle fiber pull the chromatids. So we see where the spindle fiber pulling the chromatids apart, right? By their central mirror to the opposite end of the pole. And we see where the chromatids are separating here. You normally hear me say next phase because I'm so used to the phases, but I'm just telling you the events, right? Then the final set of events, we see the chromatids reach the opposite pole and I know called chromosomes, right? And the spindle fiber disintegrates 
I would say the spin of fiber is taking time to disintegrate and it's still constrict at the equator. It's constricting here. I would see where the spin of fiber is disintegrated and we see where they are now called chromosomes. Then now at the constriction, this is where a new cell is formed. So it's constricted. We see the new cell is now, it would have closed in here. It would have closed in here, right? So now we have two identical data cells with each with diploid number, that meaning 46 set of chromosomes. We see the nuclear membrane forming around each group of chromosomes. We see the cell divide in two and the chromosome become long and thin, so they are no longer visible. So at the end, they will go back to how it was originally. So they will go back to this. So the chromosomes will now look like this when they are not replicating. All right, so that, that's it for my toasts, guys. Now, meiosis, as I said before, is involving making sex cells. And when we say sex cells, we mean gametes, or if we're still confusing it, we mean egg and sperm in regular term, right? So for the stages are, are the events are pretty similar, except for a few differences. So we still see the nuclear membrane here. We see the chromosome shard and thickness become visible, which is pretty much the same event. We see... The only difference we see here is that it's two paternal origin and two chromosomes from maternal origin. So now we are saying that two of these is from the mother, two of these is from the father because we are talking about sex now, right? And then centrioles will remain the same. So the only difference is the sex aspect. Then now we see the pair of homologous chromosomes forming a bivalent, right? Bivalent just mean two, right? So homologous mean the same, same in size here, we see. And um, the centrioles are separating. And there's a nuclear membrane. Still, the homologous chromosome pair forming bivalent and the centrioles separate, forming a spindle fiber between them. So moving on, we see where the spindle fiber is moving to the opposite end. And the thing that is different with my meiosis is that they are crossover points. And we can see where the blue is touching the red chromosome here, vice versa here. So that really, why they are touching at the crossover is to exchange information, right? To exchange genetic makeup, so you're exchanging part of the father's makeup and part of the mother's makeup at the genetic cross, right? And then now we see where the next phase, the nuclear membrane disappears and the bivalent arrange themselves around the equator, the spin of the the equator is in the middle. The chromatids break at the crossover point, so they are no longer crossed over anymore and rejoin with the opposite chromosomes chromatids thus exchanging genetic material, right? So it goes here, touch here, and then now it separates. So we can see where there's a little bit of red on the blue, and there's a little bit of blue on the red. That is showing you that the information of a genetic makeup has been exchanged, right? Then now, for, to end meiosis one, we will have the homologous chromosome of the bivalent separate and the spindle fiber pull the chromosome. Each composed of two chromatids to opposite pole of the cell. So we still see the, the pulling, right? And the bivalent separating. And then we see there's a constriction form and then forming two cells. Now that is meiosis one. But remember in meiosis, one other difference is that in mitosis, Right, we it produce two identical cells, right? But meiosis is producing four daughter cells, right? So that's that that is another major difference. So that's why in meiosis one it covers producing two, but we still need two more to make four for meiosis. So therefore, we're going to have meiosis two, which is going to replicate the processes in each of the cell. So let me go that again. So these two new cells that were created, 
they know these two new cells will be replicated again. So this cell will be duplicating and this cell will be duplicating, right? So, so these two new cells that are found in meiosis one, we see the spindle fiber moving to the opposite end already. So essentially each cell separate forming new spindle at the right angle to the first spindle, right? And then now we see where the nuclear membrane disappears. So we don't see a nuclear membrane anymore. And the chromosomes, each composed of two chromatids line up around the equator. Right? So these are the two chromatids that were made in meiosis one. So we see there were two chromatids, two chromatids here. Right? So these are two chromatids now. That's lying up at the equator. Then now, same action, it will be pulled apart, right? Chromatids pulled apart, centromere split, and put it opposite end of the pole. Then now, we see that there is a constriction forming between two, the both cells, and then now we'll have four daughter cells. So the chromatids reach the opposite pole, and now we have four daughter cells, each with applied number. Right, so apply number now, mean that each of these would have, would have, and I, and I want you to know, I want you to, to guess. So I'll pause and say, would have how much? That's as apply number. Right? So I'm wondering what, what you said. I'm hoping that the answer that you give is the correct one when you come on to, to apply number because it normally, it's mixed up a lot, right? Apply number is normally mixed up a lot. So I hope you guys know the difference between, you know, applied and Deployed. Right? So yes, that's basically the video. I hope this video um, really made it easier. Right? And um, I hope now you understand. So as it relates to applied, applied, is 23 set of chromosome, the play would have been 46. All right? That's how play would be half. So each of these would have a applied number. All right, guys. So all the best. We'll see you next time in the next video.